Greetings. I'm Bill Chiller. And for the past 35 years or so, in parallel with the traditional scientific research and teaching that I was doing at Stanford University, I have been seriously investigating the effects of human intention on both the properties of materials and upon what we call physical reality. Over the past 10 years, my colleagues and I have found that it is possible to significantly change the properties of a physical substance by holding a clear intention to do so. For example, we have been able to take a vessel of water and repeatedly change its acid alkaline balance, either upwards or downwards, by holding a clear intention to do so. This is very exciting for us, but even more exciting was the fact that we have found a way to take a simple electronic device and to store a specific human intention in its electronic circuitry. The importance of this is that now we can do this same kind of experiment anywhere in the world. We just send this intention host device that has been imprinted in a particular way to that location, plug it into a power source and turn it on. And then the people at that location can do the same kind of experiment. We have done this kind of experiment at 10 different locations in the US and in Europe. And the results are consistently repeatable. That's great. So how is it possible for us to do this kind of thing in our normal physical reality? And the answer to that question is, our experimental research shows us that there are two unique levels of physical reality, not just one, not just the one that we are familiar with, that is the electric atom molecule level. We find that there is a second level, and it is this level that can be influenced by human intention. From our work, it seems that these two uniquely different kinds of substance interpenetrate each other. But under normal conditions, they do not interact with each other. And we have labeled this state the uncoupled state of physical reality. With the use of an imprinted intention host device, we reach the coupled state of physical reality, where these two kinds of substances begin to interact with each other. To illustrate this for you in a metaphorical way, let's look at this first figure. Here we see a set of black balls which represent the electric atom molecule substance. And they have black lines joining them, so they're interacting with each other. We also see smaller white balls and there is no connection between them and the black balls. And that is meant to represent that they are not interacting. And this is what we call the uncoupled state. Now, when we use the intention host device to change the space to the coupled state of physical reality, the black balls are still connected to each other, but now the white balls have dashed lines joining to the black balls. That is meant to represent that they are now interacting with each other. And this is the coupled state of physical reality. Now, all of us sense our environment with our five physical senses, and we see it. We see our environment and our technical instruments, our traditional instruments, they also can detect our environment, and they can measure magnitudes of various things. That's what we find for the uncoupled state. But in that state, we do not sense this other level of reality, 
and our traditional measurement instruments cannot see or measure anything about that level of reality. That is because the second level of reality functions at the coarse physical vacuum level. However, when we use an intention host device to change the state of coupling, bring it to the coupled state of physical reality, now our traditional measurement instruments can partially access the physics going on in this vacuum state. These observations have really enormous implications for our world. Implications for humans, for science, for technology, for education, for business. Really everything about our world.